Get ready for episode five of the Downtown Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about Project Vesto, which is your opportunity to get $100,000 for your great idea. Then we're going to talk with internet celebrity Sarah Austin about what it's like to crash big tech parties. And then we're going to pop bottles with breaking news about the newest Vegas tech fund portfolio company. All that and more on this episode five of the Downtown Podcast. Everybody, thank you for coming out to episode number five. To start with, we need to thank Tech Cocktail. You might remember Frank from last episode, but he ponied up a lot of beer this week. So, hey, if you say yes. <laughs> yeah, and then for those of you that don't know, we're in the middle of a gigantic tech week, and this is all because of Tech Cocktail. So they've been the one that have brought all these great entrepreneurs, all these great investors, and just all these great people out to Las Vegas. And it's made a world of difference. And you can see by the energy in this crowd <laughs> that, we have some, that we have something special going on. So anyways, check out Tech Cocktail. There's a link right below me, as you can see. They got awesome stuff there. And they're going to be a big part of downtown Las Vegas going forward. So thank you once again, Tech Cocktail. We appreciate it. OK, now we're going to move into the news round table. So I want to start talking to you guys about the story that happened on NPR. So in summary, many of our very own, including Thomas Canole, Prince, pronounced with a K, were on NPR last week to talk about building a tech-centered community. So they touched on topics like allocating funding, uh, selecting the or expected timelines to build a city like this, and some other surprising weaknesses that actually also come with when a community that is built to support risk. So. Thomas, why don't you give us a quick rundown about some of the big takeaways that you took from the experience? So I, I think it was interesting was there was there's a lot of focus on like what's not here yet or you know why things might not work out, and it was it was kind of a weird conversation in that sense because you know for all of us who are in the middle of this whole thing, you know it's just so exciting. This community is so strong. There's so much going on that it just seems so exciting. So it was interesting. Um, there, one of the guests on the show was kind of from outside of Vegas and was talking about how you know the types of things that go wrong. And who's and, that? Uh, Okay, put, put, put me on the spot. That's right, yeah, yeah, okay. that's fine. <laughs> you got him on there somewhere. Yeah, we've got the list of it, that's okay, go ahead. <laughs> He doesn't Sorry. matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but, but he was, you know, kind of, you know, discouraging on it, like, oh, you know, you're doing things wrong if you, if you do it this way. So, um, so some of those types of things were covered, but I think what we were addressing was that, you know, the focus now is really on getting the community really solid, because as this thing starts to grow, um, we want to make sure that, all of that energy and the real strong community and the support and those are going to be some of those things that really differentiate us um, from some of the other tech areas around the country that you know, may have taken a little longer to take off. Yeah, and what's, what are some of the things? I mean, like, is it like they talk about this possibly being a Silicon Valley, but is it just the Silicon Valley, Valley shadow or is there something that uh, you think is truly unique and different about what's happening here? So I, I think that's probably the most dangerous thing that could happen is to try to look at Silicon Valley and say, okay, we're going to be a mini Silicon Valley. Right. Um, it, it just wouldn't work out. And, and part of that is, it, I mean, they're 35-something years ahead of us. Um, the amount of time they've been building companies and growing the culture and failure and startup and starting over and, and mixing and all the funding, you know, that's been growing there. Um, so... Part of it is that it is going to take time to grow this. I think what is interesting and exciting about this community is that with having that community so strong, I do think we'll be able to accelerate it because we'll be really good at what we're good at, which is pretty much everyone in the world comes here. And right. you know, we're seeing we're seeing that this week, you know, just amazing right. visitors who are who are coming through town. Um, so I think it really has a chance to grow more quickly in that sense. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I mean, I know I'm all in, so I like to hear the good news. But uh, let's move on to the next topic. I want to talk about uh, women in design. It's a new exhibit down at CoLab. So Amy Finchman created this new exhibit, and it showcases the work of local female designers. So I'll start this. Kind of, anybody can chime in, but I'm going to start this one with Melissa and say, uh, is there any talented female designers? Absolutely. Um, this actually, <laughs> I kind of hope so. Um, so, but this actually um, focuses on uh, actually architects and landscape architects and um, interior designers. So it's actually a very specific type of design. Um, but it showcases the, these talented six, uh, six talented local women and their works um, 
very interesting. So they'll actually be starting to do panels um, there with related fields or start doing film screening about women in design and a couple other events around it. But yeah, I think it's absolutely cool. You should go check it out. Uh, it's at CoLab in the Art Square, um, Monday through Friday, 11 to 3. That is awesome. Great. All right, so for our third story, we've got a little bit of surprise for you. Mm. Um, if you guys could please prepare your celebration gear. That's so not cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, those that's are mine. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's yours? <laughs> oh, okay. Do you Wait, girl ones? <laughs> All right. So we have, we have a breaking announcement. You have a company that just recently got funded. Do I give the news or just tell them what I do? You just, uh, you just give me your 60-second pitch. Okay, uh, well, I'm the co-founder of a startup called LaunchKey. My two co-founders, Devin and Yo, are over it. there. <laughs> oh, wow. okay. And uh, LaunchKey actually started uh, back about four and a half months ago in the middle of July at Startup Weekend here in Las Vegas. And we actually decided to tackle the problem of cybersecurity, more specifically being user authentication. And so when that 54-hour uh, hackathon, we actually created a working API and a working iOS app. We uh, won first place, best design. And uh, since then, we've been working our uh, butts off to uh, get funded. And as of Friday of last week, uh, we officially raised $750,000 from five investors, uh, our lead investor being Vegas Tech Fund. All right. <laughs> All right, pour us up a couple of drinks. We'd like, oh, <laughs> sorry, you poured up. We're going to do one, one shares, and everybody in the audience is going to help us with it, too. Thank but you. we are happy to have you as part of the VTF, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun having you aboard. All right, Solanski. You too. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> to you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Everybody, thank you for coming. Yeah. Welcome back to the Downtown Podcast, episode five. We're going to go into our... Yeah, I love it. Let's hear it. One guy, he knows, he knows that count to five. He's good. Uh, so we're going to do an awesome interview. Definitely one of our biggest celebrities to date. Um, Pop17 is where she... You created this whole thing, right? Yes. Are you the owner, CEO? Creator of Pop17. Okay, that's great. Anyway, so we're going to um, dive into some deep questions here. First off, like I want to know how to crash a tech party? It seems like you're an expert at this. And if you could just give us and other people here who want to crash a good tech event, like a step-by-step -step breakdown of like what's going on in your brain? Like where okay. are you positioning yourself? And sure, no problem. I actually made the Wikipedia entry on this. It's uh, called oh. social engineering, party crashing. It's the same thing. Um, so step one is to get a peek of the list. So if you just walk up to a party, Take a little glance on the guest list, and then you can just So you pretend name. you're lost, and then you just come up, and you kind of glance? You can glance. just name drop, oh, I'm Kathy Brooks. Mm, gotcha. <laughs> um, <laughs> what else? Then, keep, it, keep it coming. What else you got? You can also say that Use you're, boy's name you're with the yeah. service. So I'm part of the catering company, or I'm a model. Um, <laughs> and then you can I also that, just break in through the back door. So like Make find an opening somewhere and just run for it. <laughs> oh, you've done that before. You just make it, yeah. And then, and then the kind of security at a tech event is kind of nerdy. Yeah, so actually last week I was kicked out of a, a party on national TV on Bravo. So you can watch that. Okay. They're like, leave. I'm like, hey, okay, I'm used to this. <laughs> That's great, yeah. If it's on YouTube, we'll link to it in the show notes. Um, so, what, so what kind of parties have you been crashing? Like, do you have uh, a great um, story? The like first party that I ever crashed was the August Capital Tech Crunch party. And actually, Michael Arrington gave me a personal invite oh. to video blog and attend the following year. So that was kind of like a cool accomplishment. I went from party crasher yeah. to on the guest list. Now, if you're on the guest list, would you rather just kind of crash it? Like, does, it, does that take away from the excitement? Like, if you're on the list, do you still try to use a fake name and see if you can run past the security guard? That's when we had to end the show. So that was my first startup, by the way, for everybody who doesn't know. I made a show about crashing parties. Um, so once that show ended, then it just kind of fizzled out. All right. So I'm going to go real deep now. Can we um, bring up the next slide if you guys have that? Uh... So this is, a, this is a tweet that you uh, sent out on the 5th of December. 
Um, so going a little bit deeper, I was wondering if you could share a little bit of history that led up to this tweet, specifically the uh, initial inspiration, like big milestones, and just in general what uh, luck played in the role for this tweet. Wow, I slept 10 hours, needed that, period. Well, <laughs> Let's, I have been just going nonstop. Um, I'm on a reality TV show called Startup Silicon Valley, and it had just been nonstop. So I was doing like five photo shoots for magazines back to back in New York. I was like, whoa, this is crazy work. And I finally got to sleep and it felt great. I just needed to share that. You just had to tweet it out, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I mean, that's an intense thing. I'm sure everyone in the room is still looking for 10 hours of sleep. So we'll, we'll get there. Everybody has their day. Don't worry. She's, she's living proof. You guys can do it. You'll get there. Um, so tell me about what's the future of web video? Um, how are you positioning Pop17 to take advantage of like where you see this new media thing going? Definitely. The future of video online is a scalable technology that combines artificial intelligence and machine learning to create the first ever text to video. And I actually happen to be on the forefront of that technology with Sayer. S-E-Y-Y-E-R.com. Okay. And it's launching very soon. My prototype is out in about a week. And it's the first ever um, artificial intelligence. So I could just text or video blog from anywhere in the world at any time just by sending a tweet. So you, so you have no marketing competitors? I mean, they tell me, is, I mean, when you well, tweet, there is, was, is this going? There, there's yeah. some, I mean, there have been some um, people who have been able to use media and film to do similar things, but nothing that could scale. Uh, it's sort of like video yeah. Siri. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, um, so is this going to be an app everybody can download? Is this like, tell me a little bit more about the You'll interface. You'll be able like, to see it this... on Pop17, and I'll also be speaking Japanese. Okay. <laughs> you speak it? Or are you no, just going to learn how to like? I'm just going to program yeah, yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> so my mouth will, it'll be a crazy thing. Have you ever seen I yourself, can speak any have you ever seen yourself dubbed before? Anybody ever taken it to another language? Um, I have seen subtitles. We'll dub but it. this we'll is find not somebody dubbing. Language, it's actually so. like oh. my body gestures, my mouth. Everything moves authentically. You couldn't tell the difference. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. But I still think it'd be funny to see it dubbed. All right. So, um, last question. So, tell me, tell me about like this stressful, the this stressful life that you have when you're on TV. So, like, um, obviously, like I'm sweating bullets. Like, I always feel like I need ten more minutes to start a show. Like, did you learn to? Um, like handle this stress and if so like what tips might also apply to people that are working in small groups like pop 17 but they're startups and have immense pressure and do long hours like what what are some of the tips okay tips to long hours get lots of sleep yeah just to handle the stress yeah sleep a lot um, work out I'm definitely a big enthusiast for running and any sort of sport That's do you encourage great. everybody at pop 17 to hit the gym or do you just I mean, you let them do their thing. It, you know, even if it's on the Wii Fit, like whatever, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> whatever they can the gym, do. Yeah. yeah, I do. I encourage everybody um, at Pop Seventeen, and we'll do hangouts and stuff, and get our our physical on, work out, work out. All right. Well, you heard it, guys. Hit the gym and crash party. So thank you. I appreciate thank you coming you. out. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks. Wow. It seems like winter has finally hit Bay, so be sure to bundle up and stay warm before heading out to these upcoming events. First, we have UserShare 5 on Tuesday the 18th, starting at 6.30 p.m. at UserLib. If you're a community leader or looking to find out more about what's going on downtown, this is for you. Chat with organizers, talk about what you're working on, and find out how you can help develop some of these community projects. To find out more, go to usershare.us. And to kick off the holiday season, help insert coins with their holiday care package drive and raise awareness for Shade Tree and Noah's house. Donations will be accepted, started now and until December 20th. They're looking for unwrapped toys, books, GNPG rated video games, electronics or in, and or pet supplies. With each, <laughs> with each donation, you'll actually get two drink tickets for your support, so game on. And keeping with the holiday theme, join the neighbors for the second annual Santa in the Circle. This festive social gathering is at Hunter's Circle Park on December 22nd from 1 to 3 p.m. Santa Claus will be there for children to take pictures with, as well as a healthy abundance of hot cocoa, cider, homemade baked goods, 
um, and come share your holiday cheer and maybe even your favorite holiday recipe. Now, last week I did mention Project Vesto's startup competition. So here to talk more about that is Danielle Herr. All right, welcome back. Thanks for the events, Melissa. We appreciate you. Um, and you're right here magically <laughs> somehow. So that's how the green screen works. Teleportation. She, yeah, we did, uh, that's what you get when you come to downtown Las Vegas. That tech is teleportation written all over it. <laughs> uh, so first, we're going to talk with Daniel, who's going to talk a little bit about Project Vesto. So if you could just tell us a little bit more about how it got started and how the process is going. Sure, yeah. Um, the process is going great, first off. But uh, what it is, uh, first off, so everybody knows, is it's a it's a hundred thousand uh, dollar seed capital competition for entrepreneurs right here in Nevada. So uh, it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a great opportunity. Hundred thousand dollars is a big chunk of money for uh, any startup looking to get going, and uh, we've got this competition going all throughout the state. The deadline is the end of the year here, the thirty first of December, to make sure that everybody gets their submissions in. And uh, at the end of the day, in in probably March at some point, we're gonna have somebody right here in the state of Nevada walking away with $100,000 to help them launch their business. Do you have any tips? Like, so what, are the, what are the judges looking for? Male, female, Republican, Democrat? <laughs> yeah, can we give our viewers the uh, inside track? Yeah, yeah, the best. No. Uh, so what they're really looking for is, first off, there's going to be a panel of investors that's going to look, uh, actually chat with everybody. So there's going to be a five-minute pitch to kick it all off. So uh, that's going to be happening in January on the 11th and 14th here. So everybody that everybody that submits a uh, business model canvas, so that the submission form is just you know simple one page business model canvas. Everybody that submits that is going to get opportunity to pitch for five minutes in front of a panel of uh, private equity investors. Okay, and then then so it's going to be like kind of a tournament system, and then you, you have that. Top three play again, or is there like pitch again, or are you just going to judge it right off that? So what's going to happen is uh, out of that we'll select ten finalists, and the ten finalists are going to go to an online vote. So it's going to be it's kind of like Shark Tank meets Kickstarter, if you will. Mm. So it's uh, that worked good. I got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That. <laughs> that's a good one. If I can get it, you guys got it. I'm sure. That's so, it. Yeah. That is. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be uh, what the people here, you know, what the people of Nevada think. Uh, should be the business that gets a hundred thousand dollars. So it's it's not about me. It's not any you know dictation from on high that this is what's going to happen. But uh, it's the vote of of the people of Nevada here to really choose who needs that hundred thousand dollars and what's going to be the best business for us right here. Okay, so it's good. What would you, if you win the hundred thousand, what are you going to do with it, Melissa? Buy a car. Oh <laughs> man! No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I have a car. Well, so one of the. One <laughs> of the <laughs> yeah, I think you're supposed to. <laughs> I'll take an office. There you go. It's for a company, yeah. An office space would be awesome. Okay. All right, well, we're going to sign off. We appreciate you ending the show with us. And uh, to the Downtown Podcast, if you guys want to raise your drinks, thanks. we are signing out, and we appreciate having you in, Daniel, and everybody else who is part of the podcast tonight. Thank you very much. Cheers. And we will see you in episode six. You guys. Thank you. Downtown Vegas, yeah. now we in the spotlight, we ain't gonna stop like we